Um, hey guys, so today we're going to be uh, going over the string class um, and sort of the basics of it. Uh, I know up to this point we've probably been working with string classes um, basically like the primitive types simply because uh, they're coded in such a way that you can use them like that. Um, class, uh, but strings are actually um, an a uh, class in Java. Uh, they're a type of object, so um, they're a little more complex than just primitive types like int or uh, the character um, type or float. You know, uh, and they're also a little more practical, in my opinion. Um, because you, they have a lot more functions pre-coded in. Um, but, yeah, so we're going to be going over string classes, learning how they work, uh, some convenient functions, some things you have to be careful of when using them. Uh, so let's get started. And um, first thing uh, we want to do when working with any sort of variable or class is how to initialize that class. Um, and so we know that you can obviously initialize strings like... Um, uh, any primitive type, um, just like you can uh, initialize an int, you can initialize a string with just a type, the variable name equals to, and then whatever the contents of the string, and then semicolon, obviously. Um, but you can also uh, initialize it like a uh, object. You can do string, um, let's use k, equals a new string, same. And this will work just the same as uh, initializing it this way, uh, as you did with s. Um, so those are the two main ways you can initialize strings, uh, nothing too complex yet. Um, but the next thing we're going to go over is um, string concat concatenation. And what string concatenation is, is, um, is, is basically where you combine two strings uh, using the plus operator. So if I do string s, string a equal to sam, um, and then uh, I do System.out.print uh, s plus a. Actually, let's do something real quick. Um, let me change this so it's actually starting a variable. So we need a string s a equal to uh, s plus a. And then I put that into the loop or the print line, sorry. Um, and then I run this. So you'll see that uh, what the concatenation does, the plus operator does, is it just puts together these two variables. Um, into one string, and this is, you know, many applications. But um, another interesting thing uh, you can do with them is, let's say I do int i equal to 7. Um, if you concatenate a, uh, an int or any other primitive type with a string, it'll automatically convert that int into, that, uh, into a string so that you don't have to typecast or anything. So this will uh, run fine. So if I just run this, um, you'll see it says John 7 Sam. So it'll run fine. Um, you have to be careful though, because you have to make sure to include uh, one string in the operation. If you have um, just like int, um, like you have string sa equals to 7 plus 4, it won't work because um, there's no string, so the code won't know to typecast it automatically. So you'll have to typecast it manually. And so that's basically the basics of concatenation. Um, now we're going to move on to some. Uh, uh, important methods um, that you can use with strings. And the first thing um, that we want to learn is comparing strings. And um, I think we all know at this point that uh, when you're comparing two um, variables of primitive types, you can just use equals equals. So let's say I do, um, you know, boolean uh, x equals to 7 equals equals to 7. Um, I could store these 7s in variables, but you know, there's no point. Uh, this would return true. The issue is, um, Ints like seven are uh, primitive types, which means um, uh, you know equals equals is built for them. Uh, however, since uh, strings are objects, um, they, it becomes a little more complex, uh, and this kind of um, comparison won't work. And why that is is because um, the way Java stores variables is it'll store them based on the contents of the variable. So um, to save space, if I uh, define two different variables as int a equals seven and int b equals seven. Instead of um, initializing, like, let's say, two different storage boxes uh, for both variables, it'll just say it'll um, have one storage box with the 7 in it, and it'll have A and B both point to 7. Um, and this is just a store of space. So similarly, if I do string A, uh, S equals to John, um, and string A, uh, L equal to Sam, um, or wait, let me change this into John. It, since they both have the same content, 
they'll just be stored in the same place. It'll have one reference to John and SNL will simply be pointers. And in this way, um, in this context, using equals equals will work. But let's say I do something like this string. Um, uh, let me just change this. So let's say um, I do something like this string, string uh, John. Um, this, uh, since I'm creating a new string, what Java will do is um, it'll actually just create an entirely new, new storage box. So instead of storing this John and this John in the same place, it'll actually store this John in a completely new place without pointing to it. So then equals equals won't work because it won't see that S and L are still pointing to uh, have the same content. It'll only see that they're pointing to. And so that's why you want to use uh, a method like um, dot equals. So for example, let me just show you uh, this in action. So if I do system dot at dot print S equals equals to L, uh, you'll see. Okay. You'll see that it actually returns false, even though John and John, you know, are the same contents. But if I change this to s that equals l, and I run it, okay, uh, it'll return true. So that's a key thing you want to know with strings, and really any object, try to avoid using equals equals. Uh, oftentimes you'll get errors, or you're just going to be confused about what the problem is. I can't count the number of times I've used equals equals, and then realize after like 50 minutes of debugging, debugging that I... I should just use dot equals to compare two strings. So make sure to be careful of that and be aware of that and use dot equals actively. Um, another important comparison method is a dot compare to method. And so what dot compare to does, let me just delete some code real quick because it's kind of taking up space and confusing. Um, so I'm going to hold these two strings. Uh, what compare to does is it'll compare um, ASCII notation or the ASCII values for different um, strings. So I'm going to flip over to my a browser where I've got um, a chart of ASCII notation, or sorry, ASCII values um, is the correct term. And you can see that e for each character, there's a certain number assigned to it. So in ASCII values, the character A has a value of 97, B has a value of 98. Um, and so what uh, compare2 does is uh, it'll compare, uh, let's say with John, right, it'll go with, it'll compare S and L, it'll take the first character of S and L, it'll compare J and J. They're equal, so we'll move on to the next character, O and O. They're equal, uh, and it'll keep going through the entire name, but let's say I had one more character, John L and John A. What it'll do is it'll fi finish, find this uh, last character, it'll scan through these, and it'll see that A is less than L, and that means that L must be less than S uh, as an entire string. So it'll stop at the first uh, character that's different, and then find out which one is bigger, which one is smaller, and based on that, it'll return a certain value. And so if um, if I do, let's say, if uh, s dot compare to l uh, yeah, uh, equals equals to zero, or let's say um, equals equals to zero for now, but uh, basically um, what it'll do is if l is less than s, it'll return a value um, greater than one. If s is greater than l, it'll, uh, wait, sorry, if, um, <clears throat> And so this compare to method, what it'll do is if um, L is greater than S, it'll return a negative one. Uh, and if S over here is greater than L, it'll return a positive one. And you can flip the results if you just flip where L and S are located. Um, and if they're equal, actually it'll return zero. So for example, this code would just say system uh, print hi. Um, it'll return that uh, they're equal. So if I run this, okay. It'll just print out high because these two are equal, so the for loop runs prop or the if loop runs properly, sorry. Um, and so the main takeaway, I know that's a lot of functions, but the main takeaway was that do not use equals equals with strings in almost like 99% of cases. Just opt for e dot equals. And if you want to do comparisons, do co dot compare too. And so the last thing I want to go over, um, let me just set up a new string, I keep the leading line. Uh, we're just going to keep using John, it's a nice name. Um, the last thing I want to go over, uh, now that we've kind of covered the basic concept of the string, um, is some important and useful methods. So the three main ones I'm going to go over are dot length, dot substring, and dot index of. So let me just comment out whichever ones I'm not going to go over yet. Uh, Okay, so we're going to start off with dot length. So if I do s dot length, 
what it'll return is um, it's pretty straightforward. It'll just return the length of s. Uh, so we see it's John. So J A O H N four letters. We're just gonna we can even print it out if we want just to double check. Um, System Um, and so starting off with the dot length, um, what dot length does is it'll basically just pretty straightforward. It'll just count the length of uh, the string that you put uh, in the front, and it'll just return that. So for s dot length, it should return four because j o h and four. Um, moving on to substring. Uh, what substring does actually is it'll um, let me show you an example. So s dot substring uh, um, index. So what it'll do is it'll take uh, some value called index, and um, you know uh, most things in Java are zero index. So basically the first letter is going to be uh, index is zero. So j is zero, o is uh, one, h is two, n is uh, four, or sorry three, n is three. Um, and so what substring will do is it'll basically take a starting index. So let's say I put in uh, 1. Let me just put this into a print line so we can just observe what happens. Um, and so if you don't give any en ending index, uh, what it'll do is it'll just print out till the end of the string. If I do give an ending index, like um, 2, oops, I cancel. And so what will happen if I do give an, index, an ending index, like 2, is if I run it, it'll return L, just one letter, because that's what I you know, told it to do. Um, so a substring is a very useful method for just kind of uh, uh, cutting down a string to the portion that you want it to be. Um, and oftentimes, you actually use substring with uh, the next command, we're gonna, or the next method we're going to learn, called dot index of. So I do s dot index of, and then right here, you'll just put in any string. And what this function does is it'll return the uh, index of the first occurrence of that string. So let's say I do hn. Um, it'll, it should return uh, 2, because it'll go j is 0, o is 1, h is 2, and it'll return where the first letter of the entire string starts, so 2. Let me just put some print line. I'm going to run this. Okay. Oh, it'll just print out 2, right? And I can change this to... I, I didn't make a really big string, but let me change this to hello world real quick. So it's, yeah, add a, little, a few more words to work with. If I set this to world, world, we'll get 6, because h is 0, e is 1, l is 2, l is 3, o is 4, space is 5, and the w starts at 6, right? And so again, you can kind of use index of and substring together. So for example, let's say I wanted to cut out everything but the dot world, I could do... Um, s dot substring s dot index of world um, over here. and then if I print this I will print out world right because I take the index of and then I plug it into substring so that's just one way you can kind of use these methods together to get um, uh, parts of your message and so that's basically it for strings um, they're probably one of the most uh, useful uh, classes um, uh, in Java uh, you know, almost every program uses them, uh, so it's important to understand the key aspects of them, um, include, uh, especially things like how uh, they're not actually primitive types, they're objects, so you want to make sure to not use equals equals as a comparison operator, you want to use uh, various uh, methods like equals or compare to, and then you just want general knowledge about some of the other uh, methods that you can use with them, like dot length or dot index of or dot substring, so that you can make sure to use them very effectively uh, across your programs. Um, but I hope you learned something, I hope you enjoyed, and um, be sure to check out some of the other videos in the playlist.